bringing the people behind our food to life. So now that you've collected some of your seeds to store, you have to make sure that you're storing them properly so that they will germinate next year. And we have right here a few of the most common ones um, that were picked. And I'm going to show you how to get to the seeds on them and how to put them away so that you can have them for next year. So in this guy right here, this is a lettuce. And we look to the cotton fluffy part of it. And in there is where you're going to find your seeds. If you just peel it open. And you can see all these seeds that were attached to the fluff. So that's your lettuce seed for next year. Your beans are pretty easy because once your pods have dried out, all you do, and your peas will be the same way, is you pop into this guy and that's your seed for next year. And you can tell that you have seed in it because you can see them from the outside they've gotten swollen and the pot itself has dried out. Flowers, this is the calendula flower, are all going to have that seed underneath where the flower used to be at. So when we open this guy up, see all these little seeds in here? And that's your calendula flower for next year. Some of them are a little bit more entertaining, like the tomatoes. Tomatoes, you don't see the seed because it's actually inside of the tomato itself. So to get to it, what you'd want to do is you get a glass jar about this big. You put about that much water in it, so like about an inch. And then you're going to cut your tomato open. All the gushy stuff in there with the seeds. You squirt into that glass jar. And what you're going to do is let this ferment. So you put it on your counter for about a week. And what will happen is the bad seeds will rise to the top. And the good seeds will sink to the bottom. So after you've noticed that there's this funky stuff going on in there, you dump out the stuff on top, add a little bit more water, and continue to clean it out until all you have left is water and good seeds on the bottom of the jar. Then you dump this out, you spread those seeds out, let them dry really, really well before you put them away because you've added water to them so now they have some moisture. And that way you can save these tomato seeds for next year. Over here we have some mustards and the mustards, arugula, broccolis, all of those guys are going to have seeds in these little pods. To get to the seed of them, you'd pop them open. Now this one's still green, so the seeds aren't quite ready yet. But if you look at one of these that's dried out, and you open it up, you see these little itty bitty tiny seeds, those little dots. And that's your seed for these. So now you have your seeds saved, you've collected them, you need to put them away. The best thing to use is going to be some sort of paper envelope. Plastic is your enemy. You do not want to use plastic bags. They trap moisture in and any moisture that's trapped with your seed will cause that seed to try and germinate and then you won't be able to plant it for next year. These are called coin envelopes. They work really well because of the size. These are your standard envelope. They work great too. Whichever one you're going to do, you want to write a couple of things down so that you know what it is next year when you pull it out. Um, on this I put the type, so it's a tomato, what the variety is, and the date. The reason why you want to do dates is because seeds are only viable, which means they will only germinate for two years. Now that is seeds that you've saved out of your space, it's also seeds that you've purchased at the store. So you need to know what your year is on that so that you only save them for two years. Other seeds like parsnips you only get one year out of. But most of your standard seeds you have two years so it's very important to put your date down on this so that you don't hold on to seeds and plant them and nothing grows. Um, so you have your seeds in your envelope, you're ready to go. Now what do you do with them? The biggest enemies to saving seeds are moisture and temperature fluctuations. 
So the best and easiest way to combat that is to get a clean mason jar with a lid with a seal. Once you've got your envelopes labeled, your seeds are in here and they've sealed at the back, you put these inside your jar. You put your lid on it, you put this in your freezer. The reason why we use freezers is because your temperature doesn't change that much in the freezer. Um, if you were to just set them somewhere in your house, chances are that your temperatures are going to go up and down a little bit. Your freezer is going to stay pretty much the same. So you've got your jar in the freezer. Next year, you're getting ready to plant. You want to pull this out of the freezer about a day or two days before you're going to plant. You leave the lid on it, you put it on your counter, and you let it sit there for 24 hours. Then you can come in, open the lid up, pull out the packets that you're going to use to plant, and you're ready to go. Another option for storing seeds in the freezer would be to use some of those bags that take the air out. Um, there's a couple different brands out there that actually suck the air out of the bag before you put it in the freezer. Those work really well because even though it's plastic, without the air in there, it's not going to have the moisture that you're going to have to worry about. Um, there are a few types of plants that you cannot save seed from at all and some of those are commonly grown and the reason why you can't save seed from them is because of cross-pollination by the bees. There is something that's called an isolation distance. So on these guys, if you wanted to save seed from them, you would have to plant only that one variety and you'd have to give yourself about 200 to 300 square feet between another variety. So within an urban setting, that's really hard to do because you're probably growing multiple varieties, your neighbors are growing varieties, and the bees are going to transfer all of those different types around. Now the most common ones are squash. You cannot save seed from squash or cucumbers or melons or peppers. And that's all because of the cross-pollination. Um, if you're going to just try and save one type of seed from a pepper, you really have to only plant that one type in your yard and make sure nobody else around you is growing a different variety. So seed saving is something that's fun to do. It's easy to do. Um, you can get your kids involved in it, saves you some money because it costs less to save some of these guys than to go out and purchase new seeds next year. So I think it's something that everybody should give a try. Some of them are easier, like your beans and your peas. So that may be something that you can start out with just to get the hang of how to actually save seeds.